I don't want to be with somebody in my next relationship that has to have that buzz. I'm Christy Code Red, and you're listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle, where we believe food holds the power to heal or poison, and we believe our society has been misled regarding proper nutrition and weight loss. You're in the right place if you're looking for some straight up truth, because I'm here to shed light on the lies and brainwashing that has taken place over the past five decades. Thanks so much for listening. Welcome back to another episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. I'm your host, Christy Code Red, author, entrepreneur, retired professional boxer, here with Carrie Thompson, MSNRN, COO of Code Red, lost over 100 pounds on the Code Red Lifestyle. We love you guys. We're here for you. Please rate and review. Please share this if this is a good one. And today it is a good one because we're talking about rejecting what is normal. And <sighs> Carrie, you've got a story to start us off with, don't you? I do. I'm a little fired up about this because I think uh, when we did the podcast about um, what we would tell our teenage self, Christy, it made me really start thinking more. I mean, even our podcasts make me start thinking more about how I think about things. Yeah. And why I think about things and talking about how I'm trying to raise Anne-Marie differently, uh, different, excuse me, to where she doesn't have to always do what people expect of her. So a lot of my stories are in the gym. I always hope that the people from the gym don't listen. <laughs> so I'm talking to a gal in the gym and we're getting ready to work out. And she says, I have to run home and change. Um, she's wearing a really cute pair of leggings and a, just for reference, a tank top that fits her very well. Uh, her boo-boos are not hanging out. Uh, her bra is not showing. It's fine. It's a very attractive outfit. And she's probably a little heavier than she wants to be, but she is not, she's, she's not morbidly obese. She looks fine. I mean, she looks fine in this outfit. And so she says, I have to go home and change before going to my daughter's ball game. And I said, why? I mean, throw a sweatshirt on. Maybe that's just me. Put my hair in a ponytail. Like, like, like let's go. And she's saying, that's why I can't stay to work out can't take care of myself because I have to go home and, and get changed. I said, why? She said, oh, my daughter said she didn't want me to come to the game looking like this. Well, first of all, I don't know. First of all, <laughs> first of all, like that's a whole nother podcast. Yeah, I know. So I said, oh, does your daughter always tell you what to say, what to wear? Because I'm a smarty. You know me. I can't keep my mouth shut. Y'all think Christy's the one. It's me. Just so you guys know. So she goes, no, 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 that wasn't it it's really a weight thing. Of course, now, now I got that kind of lawyer side of me, Christy. So I'm like, so you're saying that if you, your scale had a different number on it, you would wear this outfit to go to your daughter's game. And she goes, well, I'm a pastor's wife. Well, now I've got her backed into a corner and she's obviously uncomfortable and I can tell, but of course I'm like a, like going in for the kill at this point. It's not, I like this person. It has nothing to do with me liking her. It has to do with the bull crap things and the expectations. She said, well, it's because I'm a pastor's wife. I said, well, you're going to have to explain that one to me. Well, you know, when we were kids, you didn't want to tempt people. So you couldn't have your bra showing. And, you know, that's not the way things were. And I said, but your bra isn't showing. So is it your daughter? Is it your weight or is it this expectation as a pastor's wife that you can't wear a tank top or you can't wear leggings with a sweatshirt? And I got her upset. And finally, I realized that I was making her upset. And here we are getting ready to start exercise class. So I just said, oh, you know, and I backed myself out of it. Like, I just was like, Carrie, stop. But I came home and I was so upset. I had to tell Christy about it on the way home. And I told Brandon about it. I said, it, it is that way of thinking is why I have so many messed up ideas about the expectations and why I'm having to unravel those religious and societal and family ideas that were placed on us, Christine, when we were kids. Well, don't tempt the boys. So you can't have your bra showing really. I mean, like that's a whole other podcast bras by boys can't handle seeing a bra strap. I mean, come on. So my whole point is, is that I just was so aggravated by the excuses and by this idea that she had to live and she was uncomfortable. She doesn't even know what she believes. She has to live up to this idea that society is set up for her. And I, as, as you're talking, um, I'm sitting here thinking back to our childhood. Um, we were, Carrie and I were raised strict. 
And my dad, our dad is a disciplinarian, was a disciplinarian. My mom, you know, she always backed him up. Um, she might not have really thought as strict as he did, but this is just the way it was in our household. And so we went, we started off in our childhood going to a strict Pentecostal church and then, and then it kind of moved to a non-denominational church. But I remember specifically that dad had to inspect, uh, inspect or approve our swimsuits before. And I remember specific, and I had a great body growing up. I had big boobs. I was very hourglassy. And I, part of me goes, I'm glad that he, that he did like, he made sure I was all the way covered up. And I remember wanting some pretty skimpy sw swimsuits and I'd be like, dad, is this okay? And I kind of wish some parents would be a little more strict on the kids swimsuits, you know, cause I really shouldn't have um, probably been wearing as skimpy of a swimsuit as I kind of wanted to. So I'm glad he said no on a couple of them now looking back, but then I go, wait a minute, why aren't we training our boys to be more restrained? And then I'm like, well, wait a minute. That's it's kind of evolutionary. That's what boys are kind of, you know, they, uh, so I'm going back and forth on what society, like, is it, was it, was it prudent? Was it smart for dad to be kind of strict with what we wore and make sure we were always covered up and make sure, you know, we weren't allowed to wear makeup till we were 16 or was it too much? And I think this is a grown woman, Chrissy. We're not talking about a 16 year old yeah, that you're wants right, to you're show right. off her boobies. I mean, I get that. Like I wanted to do stupid stuff when I was 15 and 16 too. We're talking about grown woman and we're talking about not having to conform to what the norm is not having to believe and rely on the norm now christy okay i'm gonna take it 360 no 180 <laughs> 180 as soon as i said it i knew it. i'm gonna take it 180 here we go it is been normalized in our society that everyone drinks on friday everyone drinks uh -huh, i'll be at the gym on sunday depends on how much i drink on sunday night uh -huh. Uh -huh. well we went out we had to have drinks why 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 do i have to drink every friday and saturday night why i don't so i want to buck the norm christy i want to say that we as a society have made it normal that people spend their their weekends drunk or hung over until monday morning why why is that the norm and why do we have to conform to that right why Anne marie is really interested in being a mortician people are mortified ha 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 mortician mortified that she thinks that being and she has a couple other interests again you guys she's almost 12 like she doesn't know what she really wants to do but we've why would i say to her you can't be a mortician because that's not what's, I mean, you need to go be a teacher. You need to be a nurse. You need to go. Why, why would I push her in that sense? Just because society is uncomfortable with her becoming a mortician. Society is uncomfortable, Christy, with me sitting at Mexican night on Friday and not having four drinks like everybody else. Society is uncomfortable with this pastor's wife showing up at a game or she is uncomfortable with a sweatshirt and a cute pair of leggings on. Why, why that's, that's what we want to talk about today is bucking the norm saying it's, I want to be different than what is being put out there. I know, um, not to, not to bring up the L LDS or anything, but I do know that there's a woman I know of, and she wanted to do a bodybuilding competition and she decided to, and she was a Mormon wife and she decided to, and because she had to get up there on stage in skimpy bikini, um, she was shunned by the members of her church. And it's not even about the skimpy bikini. It's about showing off the muscles that you've worked so hard to develop and your very clean diet and, you know, and being the most well-developed person on stage and winning the trophy. I did it too. I don't know, but she was definitely, um, I, I don't know, think she was kicked out of the church. I'm not sure, but I think, I think like pretty darn close. I think she got reprimanded and her husband got wow. reprimanded and yeah, it was really, really intense. And so I know there's a lot of religious, um, stuff out there and, and it's not even stuff that God tells us. It's like stuff we take from the Bible and we twist it around and we cherry pick what we want. And then we, we put our own man-made laws into it. And it just be, gets to be such a mess when it comes to religion. And, uh, that has messed up a lot of people. And I know that I have my own religious, um, things, you know, like that I'm, that I've battled with that I'm trying to get rid of and say, I don't really think God cares about that. And that's what triggered me in this gal. 
it wasn't that she's crazy or believes wrong. I'm not saying that. You I mean her beliefs are her beliefs. It triggered me because it brought back so much from my childhood. Christy, I found the meme that I sent to you. It said, alcohol isn't a necessary part of life. We've just been duped into thinking it is. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. No. Oh, I was going to say the other day I was telling you, sis, you know, um, uh, I'm recently divorced. Uh, Miles and I decided to go separate ways. And I was just talking we were talking about, you know, someday me having uh, finding another relationship. And I said, well, I said, I don't want a man that drinks. I, you know, I just I don't because Miles is a pretty heavy drinker and had to drink every night. And because he was always chasing that buzz. And I, I don't, I do not, and I don't drink at all. And I don't, I can't wrap my head around someone who's always chasing that buzz. And I don't want to be with somebody in my next relationship that has to have that buzz that has to have, has to have that buzz. And then I also don't want to be with somebody who goes to a, you know, there's a fancy restaurant in town called Chandler's. It's my favorite restaurant. And every time you go, you just feel this pressure to have to order some sort of a cocktail. And it's like, why can't, and you almost feel embarrassed saying, I'll just have some water, you know, and like, maybe, maybe I better get the bubbly water, you know, no, I can, I just get tap water. And boy, that is always a weird, even saying it, even as confidence, confident as I am, I feel weird just ordering just plain water. It's so funny that you, you order stuff and you pay $16 for one cocktail because you feel pressured to do so. Not even because you want it. You really just want water. Oh my gosh. Uh, when you said tap water it reminded me, Anne Marie has a water bottle that she can take to school every day. And I always fill it up in the mornings and I put ice and then I fill it up with water. Well, one day she came down early and, um, <laughs> I was filling it up at the sink and she said, you give me sink water. <laughs> Like it's all the same water, Amory. You didn't even know the difference, whether it was the filter water for the fridge or the sink. You give me sink water. Just remind me of that. Like, like we're making Christy's, her drink out of a trough or something outside. Christy's at Chandler's and she's all, yes, I'll have the sink water. Yeah. And a right. mignon. Sink, no, no, not bought. Just sink water is good enough for me. Yeah. But we used to drink hose water. How about the norm of going on a cruise? We just talked about this is you and yes. I have both been on cruises and you go on a cruise and they have the 24 hour pizza buffet and you go because it's there. Yes. It, if you would not normally eat at midnight, why is it any different? Cause you're on a cruise. And by the way, on pop, these are, by the way, we should have titled this unpopular opinions. Yeah. Because this is an unpopular opinion. It's an unpopular opinion that I'm not going to drink every Friday and Saturday night. You don't drink at the gym. I always get that. So you're not drinking. You're not and like, I have a, I have a four 30 exercise class on Friday and people don't want to come because they want to start drinking. Mm -hmm. And it's very unpopular to come to the gym and do something for yourself at four 30 on a Friday oh, on a Tuesday. They all come on a Wednesday. They all come, but unpopular opinion. You don't have to drink it. Unpopular opinion. You can go on a cruise. And you can just eat your code red food the whole time and have a great time. Unpopular opinion. You do not have to stuff yourself 24 hours a day to have a great time, to be able to enjoy the experience. And I mean, we've talked about this on numerous podcasts, but it is bucking the norm. Here's another great example. I just thought of this, Christy. Mom, our mom, uh, when she, uh, you know, when she went through menopause, um, post-menopausal, she gained weight. Um, you know, she's not a very tall person. So when you're not very tall, unfortunately, you know, the weight is going to look different than on super tall people, not an excuse to be heavy, whether you're short or tall, uh, or because it's just not healthy. And she told herself, well, grandmas just get pudgy unpopular opinion. You don't have to be pudgy. That's her word. Not mine. You don't have to be Carol's pudgy just because you're a grandma unpopular opinion, but it's the truth. And at code red, we are bucking the norm and our mm -hmm. mom, Carol bucked the norm. How much weight does she lose? Christy? Um, 50 pounds. She went from 174 to 124. Y'all that is a sack of chicken feed. <laughs> and those are heavy. I've unloaded the truck. You guys have watched me on my Instagram. Those are heavy. That's not a joke. And she says, no, yes, I have uh, one, two, three, four grandkids. Yes. I have all this. I have dot. Yes. I have a busy life. I have, but I don't have to be a pudgy 
grandma, unpopular opinion that nobody wants to talk about. Well, I hit menopause. You don't have to be heavy because you hit menopause. That is very unpopular, but that is a way that we are bucking the norm. Mm -hmm. When you have taco Tuesday night with the girls, you don't have to eat 50 tacos to feel like you're part of the gang. Mm -hmm. It gets me fired up, Christy, because I feel like society is pushing us to be unhealthy. And it's sort of like when you're around people that are heavy, they get angry. Look, well, what are you going to eat that? Aren't you going to the unhealthy people? Well, why don't you? And even I get pressure from my friends that aren't code red and I don't have a lot of them. Well, why aren't you going to eat late at night? Well, what? No, I'm good. I'm good. Like I don't, you know, I went to my friend's uh, coffee shop the other day and it was like, well, do you want us to make you a drink? I'm fine. I have my water. I drink my water the entire time. I didn't have to have a mocha, chocolate, haka, 2000 calorie, you know, I was okay. You know, and it's, it is finding where you are lying to yourself and where you are following society norms when you know, it's not the best choice for you. The biggest, most unpopular opinion for me in my life Here that conflicts the most is me going to bed every night at 8 PM. And this just happened last night. Uh, I live, I have a condo at the top of the Grove Hotel, downtown Boise. The residents, uh, there are about a dozen of us that own condos here. We have a private elevator and we don't, we don't uh, mingle with the hotel guests. It's separate. And the, our private elevator is uh, being worked on right now. And so we are having to use uh, one of the guest elevators. So I'm going through the lobby every time I've got to take Vinny out. And, and every time I need to leave or coming or going, or I'm going through the lobby, going through the lobby, you know, and coming down the elevators where the, the guests are. And um, just last night I was in my jammies. I had my rubber boots on and I'd already taken my sleeping pills, sis. And Vinny told me that he needed to go potty. And so it was 9 p.m. I had already fallen asleep. He woke me back up. It was 9, 9, 10, 11, something like that. It wasn't super late, but late for me. I'd already been asleep. So I got up, I got my rubber boots on, I had my jammies on. I just covered up with a big coat because it's real cold here in Boise, about 10 degrees, gloves, hat. And I'm in the elevator heading down. One of the valets said, um, I mean, the place was just packed. There are guests everywhere. Music was playing. People were drinking. They were going. And I had to make my way through the crowd and out the door to go take Vinny potty. And um, one of the valet were and he goes, hey, Miss Nickel. And I said, hi, hi, Chris. And he said, I go, what is going on here? And I kind of gestured to all the people. And he said, it's a Friday night hockey game, Christy. And I said, Friday night. He goes, it's Friday night. I mean, it's a hockey game. And it's like, this happens every Friday, Saturday night and Wednesday night. Like this is just, we get packed out because that's what people do. They go out on Friday night. And I was like, I was asleep when my dog woke me up. He goes, you were asleep. It's 9.08 PM. Carrie, people, give me such a hard time. And the valet didn't, they're amazing here. The, the, the concierge, the front desk people are just absolutely incredible. They treat us homeowners like gold. So he wasn't judging me, but I get so much pushback, so yes. much pushback about going to bed at eight and waking up at four every day. That is the biggest thing that people cannot wrap their head around. And what's interesting, Christy, is I don't even get as much pushback as you because I say something like, well, we have a farm. Nobody says a word, oh. but Christy, because she lives in a condo in Boise at the top of a huge hotel, she gets crap for it. But I don't, if I say, oh yeah, you know, eight, eight 30, we're tucked in, you know, my makeup's off. I have an alarm that goes off every night at eight 30, Christy, that says in bed, please. And it goes, I'm like, oh, I better get in bed, but it's true. It is true. And why, why do we feel the need to conform? And I think that sometimes people want to feel better about their choices and drinking boy. That's a big one. I only smoke when I drink. What is smoking. Okay. Because you're drinking. I don't understand that. I mean, who in 2022 thinks smoking's okay is beyond me, but it's the same thing. It's almost like people want to feel better about their choices, Christy, oh, their sure. food, their lifestyle, their sleep. So they make other people feel bad for not joining in the norm. It's the same idea. Oh, you're a pastor's wife and you wear a tank top. Ooh, mm. what? Ah, oh, it gets me fired up. Gets me fired up each time. You do not have to conform to what society tells you. Anne Marie wants to live in a, in a travel van with dogs someday. Go for it. 
Nothing yeah. says you have to buy a house. Nothing says you have to work a Monday through Friday, nine to five job. Nothing says you have to be traditional. If you want to be a traveling mortician with dogs, then you go for it. it <laughs> that was like, that was like all the paradigms put together there. <laughs> But I mean, you know what I'm saying? It could be anything from when you go to the gym to when you go to bed, to what kind of food you eat, to you, whether or not you drink alcohol or smoke, it could be any of those things or what you do on vacation. It could be any of those things, but I want to encourage you that you do not have to be duped into believing that it's normal to live those behaviors that other people live. I think there are two words that should be eliminated from the human language. And that is the word normal and the word weird They're Like, I just don't understand what, why we're still using those words. And I completely agree with you. And we hope you enjoyed this episode of rebel weight loss and lifestyle rejecting what is normal. At least it gave you something to think about. At least it just kind of, huh, it caused you pause. Am I doing this? Is this something that I'm teaching my kids? Is this something that I'm passing down these generational norms? I, you know, uh, it's going to make me stop and think. So we love you guys. Please join us in our code red network by going to coderedlifestyle.com forward slash APP and filling and creating your free account. It's a one-stop shop and we'd love to have you there. You guys will see you on the next episode. Hey, I'm Christy Code Red, and thank you for listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. If you want to stay connected to other rebels like you, join us in our private network. Our Code Red app is a one-stop shop, free from ads, algorithms, and censorship, and a place where you can see, listen, and watch everything Code Red. You'll be encouraged, motivated, and fired up to stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Get recipe ideas, tips, tricks, and help from coaches, mentors, and other rebels. You can also purchase products, programs, and coaching all right there in one place. And if you have any trouble navigating the app, we're right there to help you. Go to coderedlifestyle.com forward slash APP to join for free. And I'll see you on the next episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. Oh, 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 oh,